Lightning the burden of existence was a touted Labor Party promise before the election. It's also a part of the modern Labor movement ideology and most importantly is just common sense for an elected government to be tackling as it directly affects massive portions of the voting population. Important to remember here is the word responsible which implies limited impact to the government's coffers. There are three main areas in the federal budget to help with cost of living, financial assistance, housing supply and energy price relief. Financial assistance. Changes to single parent assistance will address money troubles and job difficulties faced by single parents due to additional responsibilities by giving them $922 per fortnight until the youngest child turns 14. Before the changes, parents with over AIDS went on single with dependent job seeker which paid about $177 less, among other things. They've also increased income eligibility to around $2600. The fact that 91% of single parents are women uh, also promotes gender equality. This policy change will affect roughly 57,000 people, so if you're a single mum with a bedwetter son, you might want to look at these changes and rake in that extra dry night nappy money. There'll be increases in job seeker and youth allowance of $40 a fortnight on top of increasing from inflation. To relieve cost of living pressure, the government has upped how much are those on working age benefits receive. This is especially the case for those who are over 55. Mature age recipients of job seekers have become significantly more common in the past decade, likely due to factors like poor health and no one wanting to smell out farts in their workplace. Due to this reliance, the government is extending job seeker payments to those from 55 to match with those 60 and over, affecting roughly 52,000 Australians. As for the youngins, hopefully that added $40 will help you until your Twitch career takes off, or at least pays the rent until you score a stint at the servo. Wages for aged care workers will be increasing. The government has moved $11.3 billion towards increasing the wages of 250,000 workers with a stated goal of continuing to improve wages until they reflect the proper worth of aged care workers. These increases are based on the Fair Work Commission's decision to provide an interim increase of 15% to minimum wages of aged care workers. This also means that the people most affected by wage increases will be those who are most affected by recent problems like inflation, low wage workers. Improving spinal mortality. Resolving housing problems is a stated key priority of the current government. The federal budget lays out six noteworthy policies to tackle housing problems. Increased rent assistance, investment in housing supply, local and state reforms to increase housing supply, expanding guarantee eligibility, homelessness funding, and social slash affordable housing. Commonwealth rent assistance will be increased by 15% to 1.1 million households. Rent assistance is a supplementary payment, meaning it's paid on top of existing social security payments like Job Seeker. This is given to people paying rent to private houses, so it doesn't apply to those living in housing commissions or on their own. Costing $2.7 billion over five years, the government's goal is to reduce cost of living pressure for low income renters by mitigating the effects of increased rents. Government has put forward new changes to house building. First change is increasing the capital works tax deduction, reducing taxes on house renovations for landlords from 2.5 to 4%. So companies that make new build to rent properties can get tax money back. Developers would need the project to consist of 50 or more dwellings available for rent by the public or for lease terms of at least three years for each dwelling. So benefit will only apply if the buildings are actively being rented out, possibly meaning fewer houses will be left unoccupied collecting dust. This is on top of reducing tax that managed investment trusts have to withhold for the government from 30 to 15 percent, increasing foreign investment in development. Essentially, local councils through the Australian Local Government Association and ministers are hashing out a plan where local governments will be given money to spend on solving housing affordability. Alga is advocating for $100 million per year from the government to help them deal with the issue, with their pre-budget statement saying it will be used for activities like land audits, partnership developments and housing model research, to name a few. The local government association cites the desire to solve the housing crisis is due to the struggle of towns to find accommodation, with the unique housing challenges each shire faces being their justification for playing a larger role in helping housing. I guess local Councils may soon be useful for more than just bin days. Home guarantees are Australian government initiatives that allow eligible people to have part of their loan guaranteed by the government through the National Housing Finance and Investment Corporation, or NHFIC, allowing you to get a home loan for a deposit as small as 5%. The government intends to expand guarantees for first home and regional first home buyers. Now any two borrowers, even those not in a relationship, can apply for a first home guarantee, along with those who own property in the past but haven't for 10 years. Family home guarantees are also expanded to single legal guardians of children rather than just biological parents. $67.5 million has been added on top of previous funding provided by the National Housing and Homelessness Agreement, or yeah, which provides roughly $1.6 billion each year in states and territories with the aim of improving housing affordability. The 
Yeah. Also requires the state strategies to address priority areas like social housing, tenancy reform and home ownership, on top of requiring particular care around certain cohorts like children, elderly and those undergoing repeat homelessness. As the new government is negotiated, factors like the previous agreement's success in reaching objectives, adequacy of data and the impact of economic factors among other things will be reviewed to determine what improvements should be made. There is a long way to go, but with enough effort, using park benches for anything other than a place to sit and sex could be a thing of the past. The government has created an agenda to deliver more social and affordable housing through an increase to the National Housing Finance and Investment Corporation's liability cap by $2 billion, making it $7.5 billion all up. This gives low-cost loans to community housing providers. This is projected to build 7,000 more homes directly. The federal budget describes an energy price relief plan designed to shield Australians from the price increases via price relief. The government says the reason behind this plan is to mitigate the effects of the Ukraine war which have exacerbated power prices in the country. Policies in this area are as follows. After over 60 consultation submissions between December and February and a second round in April, the Commonwealth are committing to a mandatory code of conduct for gas sales with the goal of making sales to consumers fairer. The draft for this code includes potential actions to regulate the way gas suppliers conduct business, resolving disputes and even require people to sell gas at a set price in particular circumstances. This could possibly reduce the cost of gas by forcing suppliers to sell gas at a set price in a local market, which makes sense as Australia is one of the largest gas producers and should not have some of the highest gas prices. $3 billion of electricity bill relief up to $650 for small businesses and $500 for households. This initiative, in partnership with states, will offer bill refunds. The goal of these rebates is to reduce pressure on vulnerable households. Generally, those with seniors cards, carers allowance, or low-income health cards, to name a few, will receive these rebates. In most cases, those eligible don't need to do anything. It'll automatically apply to the next power bill. Because this is in collaboration with the states, it may vary on how much you get and how it happens. $1 billion is being added to the Clean Energy Finance Corporation a specialist investor and self-described green bank, to enable 110,000 low-interest loans for energy-saving home upgrades in collaboration with other private lenders. The effect of upgrading a home's energy rating from a 1 out of 10 star to a 3 out of 10 star can reduce an energy bill by 30%, and by a further 20% if up to a 5 out of 10 star home. $300 million will also be spent to cut energy bills for 60,000 social housing properties by upgrading their energy performance in collaboration with the states. $36.7 million will be used to increase the government's energy efficiency standards and information, including an expression of the nationwide House Energy Rating Scheme to cover both existing and new buildings, allowing people to make more informed decisions. Conclusion Cost of living is certainly the most publicised policy area of this year's budget, and with good reason. The numbers certainly seem modest, but that is not too surprising for a new government that is often heavily criticised by the fourth estate for its expenditure. In terms of where the money is going, I personally think it's going in the right places. But I would like to know what you think. But please, if you have any questions about any of these policies, please leave a comment.